So in this video, we're going to make another tool for our scene. And what I thought would be interesting for our tool is something like I have here in my picture, something where we have debris falling down. I think it can be interesting to decorate our scene even more. So this is also based out of modular models. So we have planks from Quixel placing nicely there. We also have a custom model that I made here where our debris can fall. And this is all controlled in the end by a curve. So in here I can change the curve and you can see that the tool will react on this and then change the modular models. And of course we can then lower this and we can add to the line if we want to. Like this for example. So the tool itself is not super complicated and it's a nice way to decorate our scene quickly with another curve and we place all these models. The first thing here is let's start out with creating a geometry network. And in this geometry network, I want to draw a curve. So I'm going to use the curve node. So also I'm going to zoom out a bit more until I have, for example, 10 or 15 here. And let's draw a curve on the grid. Might enable also the snapping here for the moment. And we can draw something like this. Press enter when you're done. So we have a simple curve. Then from this curve, I'm going to resample this. So resample will create more points. In the resample, let's start out with filling our length to two. We can always change this later, of course. So this is the general spacing. And also interesting here is here changing this to subdivision curve. So it will make it actually a smooth curve compared to the harsh curve we had here as input. Then I'm going to do another resample node. And with this resample node, I actually want this value. I'm going to copy paste this value. So copy parameter and paste it over here. Pasting reference and divide this by two. So basically what this will do is it will basically create this middle point you see here. Then I actually might scale down my curve a bit because each point will be a model. So that's, so this will be already like a very big uh, area. So let's say from zero to 10 in the range. Then I want to use a group range. And with this group range, we can select the end and the start point. So in case we need this, we can, for example, here, switch this to points. We can set here start to end. And now we have this selection. So we can always use this if we want that. And I might just, and I will call it end and start points. Then I'm going to use the node orient along curve. So this is very useful. So with this node, it will automatically align everything nicely. You can see the normals here. They are nicely along the curve. Let me also grab a copy to points. And we, of course, want to copy our model then. So we can here take a box for the moment. So let's copy the box on the curve. And you can see by default, it follows nicely the line. But in here, the along curve, we can also change the up factor here to the Y axis. And you can also enable this. And now they should face nicely up. If I would move the curve more, you will see that they will always face up. Now I'm going to load in my model. And how we will do this is by using the file node. So with the file node, we can just here fill in a path to an FBX file and load in the model. So here I load in my model. And I've also here put a scale on it because there is always a scale difference between what you will see in Unreal and then Houdini. So 100 units is normally the difference. Then here on the curve, I can see that they are rotated in the wrong way. Now for the rotation, we're going to actually go here to this node and we're going to go over the rotations here. And then here we can actually have a certain rotations. So I want to look for this one and set this to 90 degrees. So they all face nicely in that direction. Now, what is also useful here is that we can actually blast away our first points and the last points. And I want to reverse this because these are too much because I will place only wooden planks until here. So I'm just going to delete that. 
small tweak I want to do here as well is in the group range node. I think it would be also a good idea is to have this range filter and have a value of two in here. So it sort of like will skip a selection. So it's like a, so you can see this as a dot selection as well. So it skips one. When I see my result now, it's way better. They have a better spacing and so on. And they also align decently at the moment. So this tool won't support any heavy angles. Then next up, I want to add some wooden structure. And for that, let's start out with a copy to curve. Let's copy to curve. And on that, I want to copy a line. So copy the line. So on each point, we will have now a slide. Oh, I want to start from this here. So a few changes here again. I want to make sure it's in the Y and enable this as well. Then I want to rotate my line, then rotate the line like this. And also making sure it's perfectly centered. We're going to do the axis aligning. And if I would view my original line here, we can see that now we have a perfect line there in the middle. Also important here is adding normals. I'm going to use a polyframe. And in this polyframe node, we're going to use here our tangent name and the normal. And I'm going to set the style to the primitive centroid. So what will happen now is that our normals will basically face to each other, which is very useful, or basically in the primitive center, which is only this line. Then here, place down an add node. In the add node, enable this setting, so it removes all the connections. We're going to go here to polygons by group, and we're going to say here, skip every endpoint. And now we have the lines connected in this way, which is very interesting. Now from this, I'm going to again use an orient along curve. So we know the direction of each point to copy a model on. Then I'm going to create an attribute called P scale value, or we can also use the normal scale value. And in the PSK value, I already want to give my planks a value of 3. Because I just know that my planks are quite small. So I'm just going to scale them up by 3. Then I'm going to load in my plank models again and copy them on my points. So same process here again. Find out to load in my model. In this case, my planks were stacked on each other. And then I just scale them down to its original scale I would have in Game Engine. Then copy to points. Now we have our planks like this, and I'm also going to use that blast node here where I had the start and ending points and reverse that properly. So now we have this result. So for the moment, let's temper the view this in Houdini by merging these. And I noticed that the planks are too high. They also are rotated in the wrong direction. So Probably here in the orient along curve, set this to Y axis so it's nicely facing up. Then simply we can use a transform here further to, for example, move this down. And if you want these closer to each other, we can always go to the line node. And in the line node, we can then put them closer to each other. Useful here is we can do a merge node. And you can copy the transform, for example. And now we can have multiple planks like this. So basically you can have as much as you want. You can also use a duplicate node and then start duplicating these points as well. If you want a lot of these planks, then let's add an act supporting planks. So here I already loaded in that model that I want to use. And let's copy paste this immediately on the points here from the add node. And what I can see is that this already looks like the result I want. We can of course here as well do the orient along curves. So we can control the direction a bit more. So we can play around with that as well. In my case, I think I like it without the orientation. So it stays a bit along this axis. What I also notice is that they're not perfectly on the y-axis. So let's do an attribute create. And I'm going to overwrite my up vector. So up, this is a size 3. And let's fill in 1 in here. 
So now they are facing more in that direction. So they're perfectly straight there. Then again, we can use the blast node here again and blast away that start and ending group. And merge this with this here. And I can see that they're probably way too high, but we can use the transform here again and place it like this. Now further here, what we can do is we can create some like a crossing support piece of wood. And for that, I will definitely use the orient along curve. So in here, I want to make sure this is set in again here to the Y axis. Then I'm going to go to our rotations and this will then control the angle of that, that crossing part. So I'm going to go here for a pitch. Let's try out 60 for the moment. And I'm going to do a second one, which is basically then the reverse. So I'm going to copy paste the parameter and reference it here back again. Reference and can multiply it by minus one. Then merging this together. We can again here do the blast node. So blast. To blast the way that start and end. Might need to reverse this. And let's merge that together here with this system. Now I have these support pieces over there. And let's move them down like so. So they are there. Now I might need to tweak them. So I can still play around here with this, for example. What I also like to do is actually create a attribute for the general scaling. So I will then create a scale attribute. So in here is attribute create. And I'm going to call this scale. And this will be a size three, so we can control each axis. And you better set this to one, 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 of course. Otherwise your models will be small. And I'm going to do it here as well, setting a scale value. So now, if we want, we can then here start scaling this. So to make sure it will actually fit better. And I think this is okay for now. We can always tweak it, so we can always play around here with our uh, orient along curve values and make sure it fits nicely there. Now let's make our instances. So I'm going to make a big merge node here where all our instances will be. So we'll have three instances. So one from my main model, one for the planks and one here for the smaller planks. So to create an instance, we're going to, of course, create an attribute and we're going to call it Unreal Instance. If you use Unity, you just use a Unity instance then. Now this is a string and we're going to now copy a path. So in here in real, I have one of my planks. So I'm going to right click on my model and copy the reference. Then back in Houdini, we just now paste it here in this area. And you're going to have to do this three times because I will have three different models. So we will have this three times then. And these will come in from here. Then this from here and then this from there. You can actually remove the copy to points because just these were just for previewing in Houdini. So this will then be my instance. What is also important is I'm going to have here a overall scale for each one. So I'm going to copy this attribute and set the scaling here and there. So this will then be my tool. I only need to then set these to the, to the correct one. So then here I might have a conflict that p scale is not found in the other branches. So in here I created a custom p scale value. So what we can do now is we can either just skip it or we can transfer this to a normal scale attribute that would also be possible. So one of the two will work. So this is then my tool. Let's select everything. I'm gonna make a sub network from it and I'm gonna create now my digital asset. I'm just gonna call it a wooden structure and let's click accept. Then here we have our parameters. So one of the base parameters I want to have is here. Our first example is this is sort of the spacing. So I'm going to call it spacing. Then I'm going to create a folder for the wooden structure. So wooden support. So you can control the positioning and so on. Interesting here is the line. 
So we can say distance or the length could also be nice, the distance. Then we can use the transform here. So we can move this up or down. So move pillars. And then we can also do, use this. This can then be moved the supporting part. We can expose more values, of course. And then one more folder, and this will be the general uh, scaling of the models. So we can choose the scaling. So I'm going to grab here this attribute. This will be the scale of what I call the pipe, so the, the, the metal part on top. And also notice that the size is now set by four, so make sure it's the three, because we will have three scale axes. Then next, we also have this scaling. So scale pillar. Then we have this one as well. Scale support. Make sure it's set to four. Also here, what I forgot is actually exposing exposing this rotation value. So rotation support. And then I have one more scaling value over here. And then one more last thing to do. Go to our node. We want to have an editable node and this will be our curve. So we can actually draw and control the curve in game engine. So I'm going to expose the curve here and now we can test this in game. And I can see my tool is not working because I forgot something important. So in here at the end, let's place down an add node. And I want to basically delete everything, but only keep the points because our output will be a point cloud, which is this. And we can also place down an output node here. It's important to know that we only export point clouds and not geometry or lines. You might also have noticed that in some cases it will place these extra uh, planks over here, so I don't want it anymore. So I made a quick fix for that. So the reason because it is happening is because of this group range node. So we will have two points at the end. So this will be confusing then later on when our plank system is used. So what I did is I used a group expand. So with group expand, I expand one time and this one time is enough to select all the points that will be influenced by the system. So this is the point that actually is too much. So I'm going to here just blast it away when I have these two nodes here in place, our system now works correctly. So as you can see, we now have not that extra plank that we had here. So the group expand was very useful in this case. So now you can see that we have a nicely clean result. So here in my scene, I can now drag in my digital assets. And now we have the same tool that we have in a new demon. I can also see then my curve. So the same as before. So we can choose where this thing goes. And then we can always later adjust what the plank should look like and how they should orient and so on and so on. So that was it for this video. It was quite basic setup to get this tool and this can be very useful in our scene. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.